Well, hey there, Power Pagers. This is Brian Knight from Pragmatic Works. And today we're going to talk about how you move that beautiful Power Page that you've built from development to production. So stay tuned. So you spent the last few months, weeks, whatever, building out this Power Page. And now you're ready to release it to the wild to migrate it from development to QA to production, maybe. Well, in this video, we're going to show you a, a, a new technique to doing that. Traditionally, we would have to use either PowerShell using the pack command, or we would use a, a, another tool to migrate the data, the website and all of that, from development to production. And it was rife with issues sometimes. So much so that many people would develop their websites in production and make their changes live to a production site. So in this video, we're going to show you how we migrate that from development to QA to production. Now, this is going to involve a new model, a new data model for Microsoft called the Enhanced Data Model in Dataverse. Doing this is going to pre-install a lot of the bits for Power Pages. And doing that is going to speed up the creation of new sites, allow you to do proper application lifecycle management, or ALM, give you a new tool to manage your Power Pages, and speed up the development in general. So let's begin. So what I've built, I've built a, a, just a dummy website here, and I want to migrate this from Brian's July events over to the proper dev environment. So to do that, first of all, we want to turn on, and ideally you want to turn it on before you create this website, the Enhanced Data Model. You'll do that under the Admin Center by hitting the gearbox and going to Admin Center. Once there, you'll go over to your environment. So mine was the Brian, Brian July event. So I'll find that here, oh, right up top there, excuse me. And then we'll look for uh, sites, our Power Page sites on the right side here. You'll find it here, you'll find it a few other spots as well. Once you're there, you'll toggle this option up top to turn on Enhanced Data Model. Doing this will take about 15 to 20 minutes. And what's happening during that time is it's installing some solutions into the environment to make your, your deployment faster and easier. This will take about 15 to 20 minutes at this time. The technique I'm about to show you is only going to apply to sites that were built with this enhanced data model. At a later time, they're going to show you how you can migrate your old sites to this enhanced data model as well. So a big caveat there, okay? So your new stuff will all work beautifully for migration using this technique, but the old stuff, uh, it is coming, but it, it's going to they'll show you some techniques here uh, in a later time for that. Okay, so at the time it's recording in July, though, this is the only way. So let's get back into it here. So I went ahead and toggled that on. I didn't want to make you wait for 15 minutes for me to do that, but it just note, it will actually show you the installation while it's doing it on the right here. You'll see that it's been installed by hitting this little, little uh, installer. What it installed was a Power Page core at first, and then some, some V2 templates as well. All right, now, once you do that, we can go back to our make.powerpages. We can go into a solution, and I'll create a new solution. I'll just call this blah, blah, blah. Doesn't matter for the time being, it's just a demo. And I'll hit create. All right, I'll point to a publisher and all that. Now, traditionally with Power Apps, we would always build in a solution first. And for Power Pages, it wasn't really solution aware. So now our goal is to take this Power Page that we've already built and weave it into an existing solution. Now, a question I always get asked is, should I still have my data stuff in a different solution than my, my, my Power Page? I would probably at this time recommend separating those. So have your data stuff, your forms, your views, all that in one solution. So you can port those on different schedules in your whole website. And then do your website in another solution. This web this solution is going to be rather large. So because it is so large, that's another reason to recommend uh, separating it out. Now, once I do that, I'll hit Add Existing, Site, and I'll point to the site that you're seeing right here. Now, this will take about oh, two minutes to import in, so I'm not going to make you watch me do that. But I've already done this in an existing solution. So I created a my, uh, my Website one right here, 
And I've already, uh, and you'll notice here, I have all my assets, my configurations, my languages, my uh, all those goodies are all included except for the actual uh, database itself, my database tables themselves. Uh, the data is there essentially, but not, not anything else. So it's externalized all those goodies for me. Once I do that, I'm round now ready to export this out. So I'll go to my overview tab you're seeing right here. It's a little tough to see, but it's just right there. And I'll hit the export button out. You might want to publish things before you export out. Doing so might take it about two to three minutes to go ahead and publish that. And it's just going to make sure that everything you saved has actually been published. Then go ahead and select whether you want it to be unmanaged or managed. For production environments, typically a managed uh, solution makes more sense. Uh, and then for non-production, the unmanaged. I'm going to do unmanaged the time being and then go into development. And I'll hit export out. This too will take about four or five minutes to export. Luckily, I've already done that already. So once we've done that, we'll go to my other environment. All right, I'll, I'll point to a uh, developer environment here. Uh, actually, no, I'll go back to my delete. There we go. Perfect. Then go back to solutions. And then you'll hit import solution. You'll browse out. And then you'll point to that zip file that you just exported. When you export it, it will also have a, give you a download button as soon as it finishes exporting out. Take that download button, download your file to one zip file, leave it compressed, and then go through the process to basically hit next. If it's going to fail, it's going to fail on this screen right here, meaning you miss some type of dependency. In other words, these, this, this website, you might not have deployed your database tables as part of that, as part of the other solution. So make sure that you have everything in that, in that ready to go. So once you have your database tables deployed and this deployed, you're ready to go. So now, what happens next? Well, in this solution, I'll go over here and you're noticing there's no sites. I just did the import. What happened? Well, what's happened is it has imported, but the site is inactive. So I'll go flip over to the inactive site. I'll reactivate it, give it a good name for my production environment. All right, I'll call this just whatever. Uh, I'll call that whatever. There we go. Give that a few seconds, hit done. It will then reactivate the site, create the site with my new stuff. And then as I bring in the site the next time in subsequent times, I will not have to do the reactivation at that point. But there we go, it's getting the site ready right now. And in about uh, 15 or so minutes, we should be ready to go. Additionally, as part of that enhanced data model, it's gonna make it much easier to create new sites. Typically, when you create a new site, it takes about in a new environment. It might take it a good 45 minutes to an hour to create. Now, you're closer to 5 to 10 minutes to create. So it definitely speeds that up. Other changes you might find that are pretty, pretty nifty. Uh, let me look for my July events here. Uh, is the portal management application has changed. It's now called Power Page Management. And when I open this up, all right, there we go. And I go to my portal management. You'll notice the actual application name has different, but that's not just the only difference. As part of this, they've made some vast improvements. So you see there's my power page. So you'll notice now it's called power page management. So you know you have the latest data model. And then on the left side, if I were to select, uh, let's go over to a list, for example. And oh, I don't have any lists. Let me go over to forms, for example. And if I were to select this form that you're seeing right here, uh, this insert form, traditionally, these drop down boxes will not work with some browsers. I've noticed since an enhanced data model that it does appear to be working with some browsers. It does look like it's they're using more fluid controls now. So slowly, I think you will start to see that it's more open for uh, browsers other than Edge and Chrome. So just a heads up, uh, those are some pieces that might be that, that, that might be useful for you later also. Well, this is part of our, uh, at, uh, our Power Page class we do at Pragmatic Works, as well as our hackathons and things like virtual mentoring. If you're curious about those, please visit us at pragmaticworks.com. And you can also find us, help us by subscribing to this channel to help us uh, figure out if this video is interesting to you also. Have a great day, and thanks for watching us today. Goodbye.